Okay, so uh, we had three webinars talking about creating GDT in the CAD systems, Creo, NX, <clears throat> and CATIA. Um, from that, we requested questions that anybody had, and uh, we documented those questions, and then I'm not going to, you know, state the question in any specific order. I just use those questions to uh, make a list of things I want to show you. So I'm going to start out. You can see I have, you know, I have a model. You know, I basically mixed a bracket model with, you know, our our feature-based modeling, just because, you know, it's easy. And uh, if we look here, you can see that in my rocker, I have one feature. I have a bunch of DCS points, and there's no tolerance in, on it. So to talk about uh, linear dimensioning. I'm going to, by the way, do all of this with our new GDT tolerancing function. So I'll pick the part. And you can see, you know, these are, you have all of your GDT callouts here. I'm just going to add size. And I'm going to pick this feature and this feature. And we will make it uh, one millimeter so you can see it and just say, okay. One of the things I want to point out is what's really nice about the new dialog box is I can change this to any of the GDT that I want while I'm in the middle after I've picked my features. So the dialog box is uh, very thorough as far as being able to stay in one location and doing everything that you would like. If I, um, Say OK. Now you can see in my tree I have a GDT folder and I have a linear tolerance. Oh, by the way, I failed to tell you that uh, notice how it says one millimeter GTAL1. Um, if you go into your preferences, in case you're not aware of it, we do have alias display. And inside alias display, you can customize what you want it to display here. And so you can see I activated GD&T, and if I hit this Customize button, we are currently showing the range, which is the GR, and the name. And I'm letting the software just keep the default name, and so you can see it just called it GTAL1. But because we have the symbols, you can now you know, quickly and easily see what type of tolerance it is. So now if I zoom in here and I hit deviate, oops, sorry. When you're adding the DCS GDT, you have to do one nominal build. And so now you can see that is deviating for size <clears throat> within that plus or minus tolerance that I applied. From there, I'm going to now put a linear tolerance from here to here. So now instead of a size tolerance, I'm going to come down here and say dimension lo dimensioning location. And you'll see the symbol changed. It, it actually is utilizing the origin symbol. And I'm going to say add and pick that surface and that surface. Now, when you use the origin symbol, the first feature you picked is going to default to the origin. You can modify that origin. Somewhere. Oh, thank you. <laughs> With this pull down, if you want to switch which face is going to be your origin, I'm not going to do that at the, at the moment. Um, and I'm going to make this five millimeters so that we can really see something happen. Okay. And now you can see the symbol changed and uh, this is five millimeter tolerance. Okay. Again, do a nominal build. And so you can see this is moving five millimeters. And this has got the size tolerance of one millimeter. And this surface is tracking this surface. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you some of the pitfalls that can happen. If I come into this tolerance and I change it to size, 
and say apply. Now when I do a nominal build, you can see that it's going to pop up and say, hey, we can't do this because I can't have a size tolerance between these two faces and a size tolerance between these two faces. There's not enough information for us to understand how you want this to deviate. Okay, so, <clears throat> so you can do chain dimensioning, even though I don't approve of it. <laughs> if you want, you can do chain dimensioning, and you can do origin from here to here, here to here, and here to here, and you can dimension you know, everything that you want with linear dimensioning. I'm going to change this back to this, and we should be, oh, that's not, yeah. Okay, so I want to jump over because one of the questions was, you know, what about linear dimensioning on holes? So I came over here, and now I'll just say tolerance, pick this part. And first I'm going to just say size, just to show you that if I add size, and I pick both features, and again, I want everybody to see everything, so I'll say one millimeter. Now in my bracket, I actually have size. And so let me modify this real quick so it's easy to see. Okay, so now you can see I wrote one size tolerance and I picked multiple features and um, they're deviating randomly independent for size. If I wanted them to deviate together for size, I could go into my options and I could say group all features. I'm not going to do that in this example, but I will do it uh, later on when I put um, flatness on non-coplanar surfaces. <clears throat> so now if I come in here and I add dimension location, as I mentioned, the first feature picked is going to be is going to be the uh, origin. So I'm going to say I want to put a dimension between that hole and this hole. And again, I want everybody to see stuff, so I'm going to say five millimeters. OK. So now you can see they're changing in size. This one is the origin. And this is moving linearly back and forth within a range of five millimeters. Continuing on that, I will add another dimension location. But this time I'm going to tolerance those holes from this edge. Uh oh. Never mind. So I'll pick that, pick that, pick that, and make this 10. So now you'll see, notice how these are moving together as a 10, even though I wrote a single tolerance, unlike the size that was moving independent. If you want this to move up and down 10 independent of this one, you would have to put two linear dimensions, one from this surface to that hole and this surface up to that hole. 